So a quick little extra video. This is Mark from Skywagon University. This car, I found it, you know, in a hangar, as you do when you buy planes. And I'm British, and it is. And so I ended up with it. But it was in the background in a video. And um, somebody said, hey, what's that car back there? So I thought I'd show it to you. It's a 71 MGB Roadster. It's British. It runs, weirdly. No oil under it. Strange, too. The reason that it doesn't leak and it runs is because it's just been restored. So it was like excess to somebody's needs. It was in a hangar. It wasn't being driven. I bought it. But so just in a nutshell, MGBs, being British, I had them in England when I was younger. I, when I was 18, I had a 10-year-old MGB and I thought it was old. This is nearly 50 years old. Well, it's whatever. It's a 1971. So 61 to 75, 74 are chrome bumpers like this. And then 75 to like 81, they had rubber bumpers and they were lifted and they had emissions on them and they were crap. And anybody watching this who's got one who thinks it isn't crap, sorry about that, that's just me, I always had chrome bumpered cars. Wire wheels, 1800cc engine, we'll have a look at that. And weirdly in England, these only have two wipers. In America, they have three wipers, which is strange because here it doesn't rain much and in England it rains a lot. But um, my first one, the master cylinders, which were over there, of course, the brake fluid had leaked out and the paint had gone and the area around them had rusted out and I used to drive along with a garbage bag. I'd put on a black garbage bag and put it, tuck it into my trousers and sit in the car and drive to college in the rain with water pouring in on me. And sometimes still psychologically when I drive an MGB, I feel like cold on my feet, like there's water on them from those days. But if the temperature went above like freezing, the roof was down back then. And now here we are in this sort of perfect weather for convertibles. The roof is up. It's probably old age. But anyway, let's look around it. We'll take down its roof, look under the hood, and just generally sort of look at a British car. So to take the roof down, if no one's done this before, you just sit in it and press a button and the whole thing collapses under a fairing. I wish. No, it's a little bit of an event. And I've done it by the roadside in the rain. So you unpop these, you unpop these, you disconnect the latch under the front of the window here. You pull off these poppers up to the clip in the back. Then you go around the other side without being killed by um, passing motorists. Unpop this, unpop this, take off these three. And then you gotta get the hook out of the front like that so the side is loose. And this one out of the front so the side, see the little hook goes in there. These poppers go around here. And there's a bar in here which is slotted under some teeth. So you slide that back. Whoops. Slide that back. Like that. Disconnect the other one at the front. Lift. And then tuck. If you just collapse it, the rear window gets scrunched and then you'll, in the end it'll crack and break because it's only plastic. So I put this down inside here. I mean, this is what you should do in the spring and put it back up again in the fall because it's not easy. Yeah. Roof down. Perfect, you can barely see it. Okay, let's do some reassembly. Windows down, quarter lights open. Just tidy her up for, tuck that away. And it's ready for summer. And that is how an MGB should be driven. So let's drive it. So when you get into an MGB, everyone thinks, oh, they're really small, they're small. Well, they are quite small American standards, but in Britain, they're not really. And the way to get, get in and out easily is you just put one leg under the steering wheel like that and the other leg in. A midget or an Austin Healey Sprite, that's small. You can touch its windshield, it's here. But these, I've had tons of these in England. These are great cars. Manual, of course. So it's one, two, three, four, and reverses here. There.
The great roof down. The wind noise hides all manner of other sounds. Like the clunking of wire wheels or a thrust bearing going out or some other British classic motoring joy. This is a private road, so just for the hell of it, because I'm going to simulate being in England, I'm on the wrong side. But I'd be there. So they just drive like any other little second, third. fourth nice I mean very practical they made millions of these it's like being in the movie the Italian job the opening scene remember and he's shifting through the gears in that Lamborghini and then whacks it into that bulldozer blade La uh, Italian job one opening scene must be viewed it's actually on YouTube you can watch it it's brilliant So a correct turnaround would be on this side of the road. Reverse. like a male Jeep. So the hood release is on the passenger side in England, but it's still there here. So it's the driver's side. Little latch under here, hood comes up, bonnet. It's called a bonnet in England. In fact, that is confusing because in America, that's a hood. In England, the soft top is the hood. So when you say, I'm just gonna put the hood down, it's like, well, why? It's, you know, I'm going to check the oil, the hood's up. So there's a hood and a bonnet. And even worse, aviation, these are wings in England. That's a front wing, rear wing, boot, boot lid, trunk, fender, 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 four fenders. So we have wings, which has got nothing to do with cars. So I don't know, there should be some sort of glossary underneath this video translating all these strange foreign words. So here's the engine. And they are an 1800cc... I'm not sure what that is in cubic inches. Um, twin carb, four cylinder, um, good old BMC engine that was pretty much in everything at the time. The MGA was 1500, these were 1800, and some of the MGAs were twin cams. Those are the rare and expensive ones. The American ones have oil coolers. British ones, some of them did. A lot of the British ones had overdrive and much fewer MGBs in America have overdrive because they didn't want them to compete with the Austin Healey at the time because with overdrive, this car will do like 75 80 miles an hour with normal traffic without overdrive it's a bit revvy at those speeds but yeah twin carbs keep them balanced if they're balanced they're perfect it runs like a brand new toyota if they're not balanced they can be a real pain in the ass so to shut it normal stuff put that in there. the early cars had aluminium bonnets aluminum hoods this is a steel hood so it's a 71 and you just get that latch out of the way give it a bit of a push and on an aluminium bonnet from all the pushing over the years that bit will be dented in from over enthusiastic shutters chrome bumpers the 60s cars had flush grills with chrome slats on them the 70s recessed a little bit and they had these overriders 60s cars have no rubber on their overriders this was the first attempt at you know at the national highway transport safety association's impact absorbing they thought well, that might work they did the same thing to Jags. It didn't, and it got worse and worse and worse. And in the end, it choked the car with smog, lifted its right height, put rubber bumpers on it, and it became nothing like it's the original car that they designed. And then Datsun came out with a 240Z, and everyone bought those, which made these classic. So over here, it's not so significant, but in England, these rust. So the places to look for on an MGB for rust, because they don't have a chassis, they're a monocoque body shell, 
so it, if, if the chassis, the subframe is rusted, it's the structure of the car. And you'll see the door frames closing as it sags because there's no support here like on a GT. So with a hard top roof, it braces it. But if you see this gap small and this gap big, it means it's got rusty sills. So the places to look when you first come up to an MGB, if you're gonna buy it, is the chassis legs in the trunk top and the, the boot floor, I'll use English words for my people, the boot floor will be rusty. The chassis legs under here will be rusty where the rear spring is, where the rear spring hangers attach. Here, you'll see blistering along the sill. And that's, see that seam? That seam is normally full of Bondo if it's been repainted. If that's still there, then it's been done well. So you always look on the sills, on the floors, under the carpet, lift the carpet and you'll see through it. Or at least I did in some of the ones I had in England. And then under the front wing, there's a, there's a pillar here and a platform and a mud guard inside it and the mud flies off the wheels, especially in England, more mud, and accumulates on top of a flat spot in here, which is about, it's about there. You put your hand up on top of it and you'll find mud piled up. Scrape all that off and poke at it to see that there's no rust where it's been sitting for years. So it's in there, the windshield pillars are down inside here, see where they attach, and then obviously front chassis legs, monocoque body shell out to here that it all sits on. It's like a chassis, but it's part of the body. So you look at it, check it all for rust. And then like on mine in England, under the master cylinders from over enthusiastic brake fluid spillage, the brake fluid takes off the paint and the water gets on it and it rusts. And that's a big area you have to fix. So they are prone to it. So if you're East Coast or if you're in Europe, you'll know about that rust. California cars like this have never seen rust in their life. So we drove it, bit of wind in the hair, nice old classic British open top motoring from the 70s. Uh, this is just a quick side video we did for Skywagon University. Mainly we do planes, there's one about making gun stocks, but um, just interesting car, thought you'd like to have a look. If you like them, have a look at the, I go into the detail in the planes, it, as, as deep as I did in this and maybe even more on some models. And it's more kind of just to explain what a certain thing is and what its year type model differences are. But if you liked it, there's a subscribe right here. Click on that. There's a bell you can click on for notifications. And um, thanks for watching.